Hello and welcome to the very first Mary Harrison Show. My goal is to transform people into powerful and effective communicators who get business results. And the mission for this show is to share information, tips, and techniques on how you can get the edge that you need to stand out and step up in your career and business using these strategies. My plan is that you'll take the information and apply them to set yourself apart as an engaging speaker so you'll become more influential, persuasive, and then connect with people like never before. On the show, we'll also interview leaders and experts who share their experience and advice on how you can get ahead and improve yourself within your area of expertise. In addition, we'll feature a fashion and beauty segment so that you'll kind of focus on your executive and professional presence as a way to communicate visually the powerful messages. We'll also have musicians and artists who have powerful, relevant information to convey through song, poetry, or dance. My favorite part of the show will come when I share the latest hot topics in communication. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the show that's coming up and then tune in again in the future when we'll be broadcasting. Thanks for staying tuned. I'm Mary Harrison, the host of The Mary Harrison Show, and you're watching our very first episode. Today's theme is First Fruit. And to keep within that theme, our first guest is Minister of Music Audrey Cunningham with Touch of God Ministries and No Limits Outreach Ministries. She'll be singing a song of worship. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Audrey Cunningham. Because of who you are, Lord. Yes, I 
yes, I worship you because of who you are. Everything in my life, I worship you because of who you are. Audrey, Audrey, that was so beautiful. I was over there in worship. I couldn't even contain myself. Thank you so much for coming on to my show. I'm honored. You <laughs> look you gorgeous. You know, every time I see your hair, it reminds me of an angel. I feel so And good then you're in angel. ministry, too. <laughs> what inspired you to start to sing gospel music? How did you get started in ministry? Well, when I was a little girl, I was seven years old, and my mom showed us a picture called King of Kings, and I fell in love with Jesus. The movie was so extraordinary, and I began to weep as they beat Jesus, and, and right then my heart was just touched, and I was already in church, so I said, Lord, I just want to do anything I can for you, and I've always loved music, so I just started playing the piano at seven years old, seven, seven years old, wow. making my little mistakes, <laughs> and it was so comical because the people at my church, Israel AME Church in New York, they were so supportive, and they said, you just keep on playing, babe, because one day you're going to be really good, and I just kept doing it, and I thank God for it. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time praising him. You know, I am inspired every time I hear you. We've known each other for about three to four years, yes. and we have come from the prayer mobile come on to the studio <laughs> Hello. <laughs> on the first episode of the Mary Harrison Show. Um, um, I'm, I'm really so happy that we did this unto the Lord because he has brought us this far. Yeah. One of my yeah. favorite songs, and I'm not going to get you to sing that one. Okay. We've come this far by faith. By faith. Leaning on. <laughs> okay, she's a singer, not me. <laughs> Leaning on the Lord, but yes. thank you so much for coming. And ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because Audrey's going to sing a second number at the end and take the show to a close then. Thank you so much, Audrey. Thank you. Today is our special guest. We have Pastor John Pedro. Pastor Pedro is the general overseer of Faith Clinic International Ministries, and he'll talk to us about what the Bible says regarding purpose and using your gifts and talents to start a profession or a business. I'll also ask him to shed more light about the principle of first fruits. I'm here with Pastor John Pedro, the General Overseer of Faith Clinic International, a non-denominational church headquartered in Latham, Maryland, with a branch in Tampa, Florida. Pastor Pedro is an anointed teacher of the gospel and my pastor and mentor. And it's so exciting for me to have you here this afternoon, Pastor Pedro. Thank you for coming Thank to you. the very first Mary Harrison Show. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. You're welcome. I'm, I'm so excited. You know, last year when I was telling you about my idea and vision for the show, not only did you encourage me, you prayed with me and agreed with me. And you prophetically spoke. And here we are, this first day. It's actually a dream because my background is in computer science, but public speaking and communication skills training is my passion and my gift that I turned into a business early last year. So can you tell us a little bit about what the Word of God says about gifts and talents and turning those kind of things into a profession like I did? Well, to every product there is uh, ability embedded in it by the manufacturer to make the product to perform what it's designed to do. And so to every human being there is a gift, a grace in you. And uh, until you discover that gift, that grace, life becomes meaningless. And once you discover you can pursue it, and uh, you soon discover as you move from one phase to the other, you see things going well for you. And so when I met you last year, was it last year? Last year, I spoke into your life because I saw something in you that has to come out. And I'm so glad that God has made it to be. And uh, it's one of those things about purpose, vision, and passion, and, uh, and pursuing your dream. So I'm so glad that you are. In this and show, I'm, I'm really glad so that you did encourage me because there's a scripture that says, use your gifts, it'll make room for you. Yes. And actually, it has made a lot of room. i am working with consultants and I have other business owners who have supported us in this effort. And it's just wonderful when we can collaborate and kind of sharpen each other's skills and just put yourself out there. You know, I believe that this show will be a blessing to a lot of people as they watch. We're going to, you know, give people tips and suggestions on how they can be effective communicators. 
But sure. one thing I wanted to ask you about, because I've called this the first fruits show. Sure. The word says that our first fruit is supposed to be given unto the Lord. Yes. So what does that really mean and how does that impact us if we obey it? Because not all the time we don't always obey it. But what happens The first we front has to do with your, uh, your first product, your first output, your first strength. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says you should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added to you. So when you give that to God, you are saying, God, I trust you to see me through. I believe you, that you are faithful. And I know that with you on my side, I can become what you design me to be. So first front is very important because it shows that you trust God, you have faith in God. You have confidence in what God says. And as you obey him, you will surely see the IRS daring. So I'm glad that you are putting that into practice. Thank you. It means a lot to me, Pastor. At least I can display the fact that the Word of God has made a difference in my life and that I really want to apply the principles because I don't take credit for where I am today in the business yes. or even with having a show and actually sure. working with other people. I believe it's all by His grace. Yes. And any success that's going to come in the future, I definitely want to give God all the credit yes. for it. And in a minute, when uh, our Minister of Music comes back, Audrey Cunningham, to sing and worship because this is such a big deal to me, sure. really wanting to do this. As a corporate trainer and speaker, my favorite scripture is, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, communication is the art of leadership, and it's the bedrock for any kind of interpersonal relationships, communication skills, in work, you know, in your career, in your profession. But it's interesting to, to know that the Word of God also talks about you know, a soft answer turneth away wrath, and sure. then, of course, being seasoned with salt. So sure. how do you explain that in terms of seasoned speech? Well, that's Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, words are powerful. Words make, words can break. Words can make you become great in life. That's right. And uh, the issue of life is issue of words because faith comes by hearing. You become what you are by hearing. So if you hear the good things, it will make you become good. If you hear the bad stuff, it will make you become bad. So it's, it's all based on words. So it when is. you have a seasoned word, the word that encourages, the word that sparks some faith in the inside, of course, there's no limit to how far you can go in life. But if you have words that dampen the spirit, make someone become f frustrated in life, uh, it's going to be struggling all through. So words are powerful. That's why when you have continually receive words that are seasoned with salt according to Ephesians chapter 4. They, they make you become great in life. And also when you speak it too, it encourages the people around you. It, it makes does. them become good too. Yeah, I know. That's a lot of the uh, testimonies that I get back. When I'm training, even when I'm speaking to people one-on-one -on -one, sure. during my personal coaching sessions, sure. they say, well, you know, you're so positive and you're always so encouraging. And I, and I really like that, hearing that. That encourages me to do what I do and to do more of it. And I'm lucky that I was able to kind of identify my purpose because what I do now is so far removed from what I studied in school. I just but it gives me so much fulfillment to help other people, you know, find their voice and to kind of be in this whole industry of communication. But Pastor, I know there's a lot of people watching yes. who are probably on a profession or doing something that they don't have that heart satisfaction. What can you sp say to them to encourage them to kind of get in line with their purpose and finding their purpose? Because it took me years. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it has taken me a while to get here. Is there a shortcut to identifying purpose in your life? Well, the, the major thing to look out for is your passion, what you love to do. Like I said before, without, without, without necessarily you know, having to go through all kinds of educational stuff and all that, you know. Just, just pay attention to the inside mind, what you are born with, what you love to do. That's right. What you, you can do easily without stress, without anybody having to coerce you to anything. Uh, once you discover that, you don't want to pursue it. Because the Bible says to every enter enterprise, there is an hard work, there is a uh, staying on course, being focused, um, and also keeping the facts. Once you're able to gather all those things together and then you just stay on course and you pursue them, they will surely speak. The Bible says the vision is yet for appointed time. For it will speak. Time, it, will speak. it will speak. And to every purpose on that sun, they are designed to speak and God is faithful. 
um, is faithful. So it takes you to yield yourself to him first. Commit yourself to him. And as you commit yourself to him, whatsoever he puts in you, that you know you don't have to necessarily go, go through um, demanding stuff to accomplish, then pay attention to it and pursue it. That's right. And then stage by stage, you see, the, you see things unfolding in your life. And the irony of, of, of purpose is that there are a lot of people that God has designed to make sure that that comes to pass. And they will come by your way as you keep on pursuing the dream. That's true. I can relate to that because I've had a lot of people surrounding me Amen. who've just been excited about my vision and wanting to be a part of the projects. And, Amen. you know, when, when you talk about drive, yes. that is so true because when you start a small business or any endeavor, yes. it's not easy. And yes. if you don't love it, you might you know, give up or you might be discouraged because there's a lot of uh, distractions. distractions. Yeah, there's a lot of distractions. Because to everything given by God, they will always want to fight it. That's right. There's nothing heaven has given out that the devil won't go out to fight. So you have to make up your mind. It takes determination. It takes uh, uh, mind making that this I will not deviate from. I will stay focused no matter what. And the, the, the the, the issue about purpose is that there's always no money to start it. But as soon as you keep your head into you, keep on doing what God is asking you to do, the resources will keep flowing. <laughs> gradually, I'm glad gradually. you said that. Yes, I'm encouraged because the know, money needs to I start know, flowing. I, I, but I don't do it for the I money. Know. And I'm sure a lot of people who want to get into their business or passion, they, they would definitely do it for free. Because actually I have done what I do now for 10 years pro bono with an organization called Toastmasters International. I loved it. Yeah, but, it's, but the skill you've gathered there will pay way for you for your next level. Yeah, priceless. Exactly. So it's a key to life. Once you identify what God is asking you to do, just stay on it. Stay focused. Be a blessing. Because the, the way the designer designed us is to be a blessing to one another. That's right. It's to use my purpose to be a blessing to you. And as I use my purpose, my, my gift to be a blessing to you, the blessing comes in. That's how God designed it. As you give it, you receive back. That's right. That's the divine pro program of God. That's how he designed the system. That is so encouraging. We bless God. That's why I go to your church, because you're such an Thank encouraging, you, motivational oh, you make me feel minister. Good too. You made me feel good, too. <laughs> Before we wrap up, I really want to know how you found your calling and how you came into the ministry, because your background is in science as well. That's, Can you tell a, us a little bit? I know that's, that's a long... That's a long... <laughs> <laughs> that's a long, long Just a story. little bit? Where I read uh, zoology when I was in college. Uh, my dream has always been to... Or one of my passion is to be a medical doctor so I can be helping people. I love to help. Um, but little did I know that it's the other way. God wants me to help, to be a blessing in uh, you know, preaching the gospel. So I got into the field. I completed, I had a degree, and after that, uh, while I was there, prior to that time, I've been having the, the, the heaviness in my spirit as per what God wants me to do. How? I didn't know. The thing about God is that he shows you where you are going, but won't tell you how to get there. That's right. It's because he wants you to trust him and believe him. So he told me, I mean, having this heaviness in my spirit, and I just felt that it's going to speak, it's going to happen. And um, it, the vision became clearer as I pursued him. And uh, here I am today, uh, having a ministry, having branches, which is the Lord's doing. It is the Lord's doing, because any time I'm sitting in the congregation and I hear the word, I'm so encouraged and really motivated to push forward with what I'm doing, and that's, that's what it's all about. We bless God. We bless God. Thank that's you so much, Pastor, it. for coming on my first show. I'm, I'm so, so, I'm so honored so that you made the time. I'm so glad. And hopefully you'll come back again sometime sure, soon. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. God bless you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was my interview with Pastor John Pedro of Faith Clinic International. I will share more information about the ministry at the end of the show. And also we'll put up more information about worship schedules and location on our website. Thank you so much. Today on Hot Topics in Communication, I want to talk to you about personal branding. Your personal brand is the feelings and the perceptions that people associate with your identity.
When people see you, hear your voice over the phone, or receive an email or letter from you, there are certain feelings and perceptions that come to their mind based on how you talk, the way you act, how you look, and present yourself. That is your persona, your personal brand. Are you in control of it? Do you know how other people see you? But more importantly, do you even care? Your personal brand is your professional alter ego, which is designed for the purpose of influencing how you're perceived with the goal of leveraging your brand to create opportunities for yourself in business. In a competitive environment, you'd need a captivating message. And I say, take control of your messaging by enhancing or developing your personal brand. It'll help you to increase your credibility, gain recognition and visibility for promotion, and it'll distinguish you in a crowded market space. And if you've not done so already, already, I encourage you to identify and develop that brand. It can give you the leverage that you need to control and manage the perceptions that people have about you. That's what the most successful brand names do, such as Apple, Starbucks, even Oprah. And they do it quite effectively. Your personal brand should be, one, authentic. Two, reflect your true character. And three, communicate your strengths. Well, that's all we have for you today on the show. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Before I sign off today, I, I just have to give a couple of shout outs to my amazing team of producers, editors, stylists, cr the crew, as well as the Bowie Comcast station for hosting the show. And most of all, my father in heaven, who does all things well. Until next time, my name is Mary Harrison, and that was the Mary Harrison Show. Thank you so much. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. I stand amazed in your presence there is nothing you cannot do I stand amazed in your presence there is joy peace and hope there's no one like you God, awesome is your name.